Hey what's up everyone welcome back to the channel my name is Divit and in today's video I'll be giving you a complete step by step guide on how to create Google Forms. I'll show you how to create this form you see on your screen right here from scratch. We'll cover all of the steps and talk about how we can take a look at the different settings on the forms, how we can analyze the responses and all of the different metrics right here, how we can go ahead and customize our forms theme and colors, then I'll show you how we can preview our form in real time. And then finally, how we can publish it and how you can go ahead and share your forms link to anybody on the internet. So if all of this interests you, then stick around, subscribe, and let's get into today's video. Now to get started, the first thing we're going to do is log into our Google Drive. And then within our Google Drive, just go ahead and press the new option and then just select Google Form to create your new form, which should take you to a page that looks like this. Another way you can do this or reach this page rather is just to go to your browser and type in forms.new and it will take you to this page right here. Now once you're on this page we have a bunch of different settings available to us. The first thing I'm going to talk about is this one over here which is how you can go ahead and name your form. So for this particular example I'm going to go ahead and make this a customer feedback form. All right so that's what we're going to go ahead and call it and then over here if I just go ahead and click it we can see it changes the name. Now here we have our form description. Now the form description is an option description, but I'm gonna go ahead and actually add something in just to go ahead and give further context to people. So I'm just saying we value your feedback. Please fill out this quick form to help us improve your services. Now let's go ahead and talk about how we can go ahead and create questions. So the first thing I'm gonna go over here is create a multiple choice question for people to answer. So you can go ahead and choose your question over here. And then we can see right here that based on what I put in here, Google is basically telling us what it thinks the answers should be or what type of answers rather. So here it's given us a linear scale, but what we're going to go ahead and choose is multiple choice. So you have all of these different answer types you can go ahead and choose. I'm going to go ahead and choose multiple choice. And then we can go ahead and select the first option here. So here I'll just go ahead and say very satisfied. And then I'm going to go ahead and add another option, just call it satisfied. And then another option, just call it unsatisfied. And then you can go ahead and add this option, which basically allows people to write whatever they want to. So they don't have to necessarily pick one of these first three choices. They can just go ahead and put in something else as an other field. Now, the cool thing over here is that Google allows you to make a particular question required by just toggling this required key. And then this is basically a question that people absolutely need to answer. Now you can go ahead and delete a question by pressing the trash can option or you can just go ahead and duplicate it and the same question appears twice. All right, so now if I want to, let's say for example, put this second question on top, I can just go ahead and change the positioning by just dragging and dropping it like I'm doing so over here. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete this question. Now once we have our first question in place, we can go ahead and add a second question by pressing this plus icon. And now we can see we have a new question available. Now for the second question, I'm just going to go ahead and ask people what did they like most about our service. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it like this. And Google is recommending we have an answer type called paragraph, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it at short answer. And again here, we can go ahead and make this required. I'll add a third question over here, which will basically be a drop down this time. And this time I'm going to go ahead and ask them how did they hear about us? All right, so here we're going to go ahead and put in a question. And right here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose drop down. Now, similar to our multiple choice here, we can go ahead and put in our option. So I'm gonna go ahead and say social media. I'll add another option called website. I'll add another one called friend and a final one called advertisement. And then once we have this done, we're happy with our three different questions. Now for this particular question, we'll keep the required field off. So this is an optional question. And the next thing I want to talk about is how you can add further details to your forms. So if you want to go ahead and add images, videos, or even headlines to your forms, you can do so by selecting any of these options. And you can even add different sections to your form. So you can divide your forms up based on certain categories. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually delete this section, but you can go ahead and add it if you want. Once you're happy with what your form looks like, the next thing I want to talk about is this customized theme option. So here you can go ahead and play around with the background color. You can change the font size, the font style, and you can even add images. So let's say, for example, if I want to add a header image, I can press choose image, and then I can go ahead and choose one of the stock images Google provides or just upload one for myself. 
For the sake of this example, I'll just go ahead and choose this first stock image and then press the insert option. So once we do that, we can see right here, the form's look has changed. There's this image been added at the top and the overall feel is now changed from purple to blue. Now we can go ahead and further play around with this over here by making any changes we want. And we can again change the background color. The next thing I want to go ahead and talk about is how you can preview your form. So by pressing this option over here, which says preview, this is basically what your form will look like to people that are actually submitting it. So you can go ahead and fill out your fields, take a look at it, and once you're happy with it, you can publish it. So once we have that understood, the next thing I want to talk about over here is the settings tab. Now on this tab, there's a bunch of different options we can go ahead and configure. The first thing over here is that we can go ahead and make this form a quiz by assigning point values, setting answers, and automatically providing feedback. So if you go ahead and toggle this, you can go ahead and play around with that right here. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this because we're not trying to make this a quiz. For our responses here, this is an important field. Here you can go ahead and tell Google whether or not the form should be collecting emails. So right now it's selected to do not collect. But if you, for example, choose verified, now basically anybody that has to submit this form needs to be signed in to Google. All right, so that's a requirement we've set. If you go ahead and choose responder input, they need to manually enter their email address as a required field to submit this form. If I go back to the form with this setting enabled. We can see we have this field now, which is a email field that people need to submit. Now, similarly over here, you can go ahead and choose to give the responders a copy of their response and when requested, always, or keep it at off. For now, we're going to go ahead and keep it at do not collect. Now over here, it says allow response editing. So people can basically make changes to their form after submitting it, if you would go ahead and enable it. And then here, require sign in limit to one response. So here, basically we're telling people that they can only submit their responses once, but they will be required to sign into their Google Gmail account. Okay, so there's all kinds of different ways you can go ahead and play around with this to really make it as customized to your particular needs. So once you have all of these settings in mind, you can go ahead and play around with it in the presentation setting over here. You can go ahead and actually choose to shuffle the question order, for example. You can allow people to view the result summary after they submit it. You can, for example, show link to submit another response. There's all kinds of amazing things you can do based on your particular needs. So once we're happy with all of the different settings over here, let's go ahead and actually publish the form. So to publish the form, you just go ahead and press this publish option. And then you can go ahead and choose exactly who the responders should be. So I can go ahead and press the manage option over here and I can go ahead and choose the responder view. And for example, right here, I can go ahead and say anyone with this link. So basically anyone on the internet with this link can respond to the form or you can make it company wide or you can make it to specific people by just putting in their email addresses over here. So I'll just keep it to anyone with this link for now. Press done and press the publish option. Now this particular form has been published, so now we can see it is live. And now if I go ahead and press these three dots right here, I can go ahead and actually choose to embed this form onto my website by using this code. So if I just go ahead and take this code, I can put it onto my website very simply. Similarly, if we go back over here to these three dots, we can go ahead and trash our particular form. We can go ahead and make a copy of it, or we can go ahead and unpublish it. If we go ahead and press this published option, we can go ahead and choose this copy responder link and go ahead and press shorten URL. This is basically the URL we can go ahead and send people to submit this form. All right, so that's how you can go ahead and send this particular link to anybody on the internet. They can then submit this particular form. Over here in the published options, you can go ahead and choose to not accept responses. So if you go ahead and select this, basically the form will be no longer accepting any new responses and you can press the save option. For now, we'll just keep everything as is and press save. So let me just go ahead and actually fill this form out. And then once it's out, I'll show you how we can go ahead and assess the responses. So here we are, here's my form. Let me just go ahead and put in some dummy information. And once I have everything filled out, let's go ahead and actually press submit. So here we go, guys, we have submitted this form. The response has been recorded. Now, if I go back to my form over here, we can see under this responses tab, we have this one next to it. And if we go ahead and click it right here, we can see all of the different metrics for our different responses. 
So here we have a summary of all of our responses and how they play out in a pie chart format. Here, if we go ahead and press question, it tells us exactly for the question what the response was. So for this question, it was very satisfied and there was one response. If I go to the next question, this is what I typed in, customer service, so on and so forth. You get all of the different you know, metrics right here available to you. So that's pretty much it, everybody. That's how you can go ahead and take a look at the responses. If you press these three options over here, you can download your responses. You can delete all of your responses. You can get email notifications for new responses. As you can see over here, it's now enabled. I can go ahead and disable that once again. And this is basically how you can go ahead and play around with the different responses for your forms. Now on that note, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it educational. If you did, then go ahead and press the like button and share it with your friends. And if you're interested in more content like this, then check out my channel. I make all kinds of videos on digital marketing, tech, and AI. That being said, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.